Hello, we're at the Skoll World Forum in Oxford in the UK and with me is Wawira Ndiru, founder and CEO of Food for Education, a locally led school feeding programme in Africa. Wawira, welcome, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Ruth. Um, Food for Education started out uh, of a makeshift kitchen in Kenya in feeding just 25 children. Now you're delivering 3.8 million meals a month across Africa, which is amazing. Um, how did how did you achieve that kind of scaling up? Tell us about that journey. Yes, thanks for having me. It's such an honor to be here um, and to be here at the School World Forum. Um, you know, food is really essential and food was really one of the things that I grew up knowing was key to life and key to access to opportunities because I grew up seeing a disparity between uh, myself who was lucky enough to have three meals a day uh, and people around me, kids around me who didn't have that. And so when I went to university, um, I was very um, intent on doing something to intervene on education. And so I was studying my degree in Australia and I asked my parents to go to the public schools and find out what the biggest issue kids had. And the answer was food. Kids were fainting, kids were hungry, kids didn't have access to meals. And so ensuring that kids eat was became a focus for us. So I didn't have much money. I was an international student. I raised money through friends, uh, built the makeshift kitchen, and started feed, started feeding 25 children a day. Now the program has grown significantly. Uh, we're feeding 300,000 300, kids every single day. Uh, and it's incredible from the operations, the logistics, moving from one makeshift kitchen to one central kitchen. So we use most primarily a central kitchen model where we cook out of the kitchens and then we distribute the food. Uh, we operate out of 18 central kitchens right now um, and distribute 300,000 meals across five counties in Kenya. And you're here at the Skoll World Forum as an award winner of the uh, Award for Social Innovation. How have you uh, innovated? How have you harnessed technology uh, within the organization to, to achieve this impact? Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things that was really important and is really important to scale is how do you bring in technology to make processes that are difficult easier. Uh, and one way that we use technology is through our kitchens. So our kitchens are highly automated around production, around um, data and analytics, predictive analytics around how you cook, how many kids are you cooking for so that you don't have wastage. Uh, we have close to 0% wastage. Um, and making sure that kids are getting nutritious meals, they're getting the right quantities, the right nutrition, the right pro not overcooking food and losing the nutrient co uh, components and all that is um, technology helps us track that and then on the other pieces we involve parents through technology so parents contribute a very small amount of money so that they can have the participation and the ability to continue supporting their kids which they take a lot of pride in to be able to provide for their children in that way uh, and they do that through mobile money so they top up a small amount through mobile money, no transaction charges, are very easy to top up. And when they do that, uh, they're able to access, every child has a wristband, which is the same as a Metro card or an ATM card. Um, and that wristband is what they tap. We call it tap to eat. They tap and they get their meals. Uh, so we're using technology in those two key ways around our entire value chain to make sure that we're efficient, that we're cost effective, that we have no waste and also to enable parents to participate in the feeding of their children in a very easy and very cost effective way. And you've de delivered this Giga Green Kitchen mm -hmm. uh, which has enabled you to, to deliver 10 times uh, more meals just in the last year, is mm -hmm. that right? Yes. Um, can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, all our kitchens are green kitchens, meaning that we use eco briquettes um, to make sure that we're taking eco briquettes are made out of recycled waste. So recycled waste, compacted, made into a source of fuel. Uh, that's what we're using to cook. So we're not, you know, putting harmful, we're not cutting down trees, we're not putting in harmful, um, you know, harmful fuels into the environment. Um, and then the other thing is when we're thinking about our scale, we've been really intentional also about making sure that we're kind of getting really efficient around our production. 
and around our distribution because when you're cooking for a smaller central kitchen cooks for about 10,000 kids every single day and our largest cooks for about 60,000 kids every single day so making sure that when you're producing at that scale you're not also polluting the environment uh, and so our giga kitchen which produces 60,000 meals every single day um, is using clean energy to be able to cook the meals and to distribute so we're making sure that it's green, it's renewable, um, and at the same time, it's feeding kids for a very cost-effective way. Mm. And how important is the local context and uh, using locally sourced uh, food, for example? Yeah, that's very, very a very good question. Uh, one of the things that was really intense when I was starting out was I didn't have a way to ship in food <laughs> into Kenya, right? Uh, I was just a, a student, a university student. So we went to the market and we bought food. And that continuously has grown bigger. You go to the market until you, you can't go to the market anymore. You go to the farmers, you go to aggregators, and they're finding food directly for, from the farms. Um, and so finding food locally is very, very important to us because, first of all, it's coming directly from the farms, so it's fresh. Uh, it's supporting local farmers. It's creating an, a, an economy benefit that is really much bigger than just the school meals that we're providing for the children. Um, it's also enabling our farmers to be able to have consistent access to markets uh, because when schools are open, farmers know for sure Sure, I'm going to be able to sell um, X amount of bags of maize, of beans, of, of lentils, uh, of vegetables as well. And that will be able to be very stable income. So it's been really important just because we're a local organization, we only had what we was, was around us to build from. And so going to the markets, going to aggregators, going to our farmers has become really core to our model because, you know, that's what we have. Yeah. And what's your own experience of food and uh, of school meals uh, as a child? Did that shape what you're doing now? Yeah, I mean, the school that I went to uh, did not have great school meals. <laughs> and so my experience, um, it wasn't as delicious as the meals that we provide today. And so one of the things that have been really intent um, based on that experience has been making sure that the kids have very delicious food. Um, and so our team is working around the clock as they're cooking this, you know, 60,000 meals that it's 60,000 meals, but every child feels like the, it was cooked just for them. You know, like each meal was prepared very carefully just for them, that it's delicious, it's fresh, um, it has good ingredients straight from the farm. Um, and that's what I feel, you know, in my primary school experience, I, I had meals, but they were not as delicious as the meals we provide <laughs> right now. Yeah. And what's the impact that you're seeing on the ground from delivering these, these school meals to children? What difference does it make to them? The impact is massive. You know, first of all, the first impact is that the children are able to go to come to school uh, because they're thinking, you know, I could stay home, I could do all these other things, but if I go to school, I'm sure at lunchtime I'll get a meal. Uh, so we've seen increase, increased enrollment, around 30% increased enrollment. We've seen better education outcomes as well. Uh, we've also seen better nutrition outcomes, uh, which we're continuing to track as children grow up and children develop. Um, and we're seeing that children are likely to come to school, they're likely to stay all day in school, and they're likely to learn, which is a really big part of our kind of thinking about impact is really, first of all, children are happy, the food is delicious, but there is a, it goes the next step after happiness <laughs> that there is education outcomes, there are nutrition outcomes, um, and children are able to actually transition to high school and then to college. We've, when we started with the 25 children that we started with, which was in 2012, we now have kids who finished high school, finished college, uh, if you can believe it, that's 12 years ago, uh, who finished college and are now working with us. So they're part of our ecosystem, providing meals to other kids like them when they were young. So mm. that sort of full circle that it, the impact is not just the day that you get full, it's that you're in a classroom, you're learning, um, your body is growing and you're getting the right nutrition and you're able to concentrate in class. Yeah. yeah. And what's needed in terms of investment, in terms of political will uh, to replicate this program across, uh, even further across Africa? There is, that's a good question. So around um, growth, we've been looking at, you know, how we work with government, uh, 
We work with the government of Kenya, for example, through counties in uh, different counties in Kenya, including um, Mombasa, Moranga counties, these are counties in Kenya, and Nairobi County, uh, which is the capital of Kenya. And we're providing meals with government to be able to ensure that children are be able are able to learn um, and stay in school. And we've seen significant political goodwill towards that. And we've seen, you know, these three governors really take on and budget for and be able to finance the work that we're doing and the work that children really need um, every single day, this meal delivered to them. And we're seeing others now come on board and start thinking about how do I get involved? How do I support this work? Uh, we hosted the president of Kenya two times last year where he came out, had a nice plate of rice and beans um, and fortified porridge as well in one of the counties that we work in. And he's also being a, uh, been a strong supporter of school meals. So it's really important um, as we continue to grow that the government, who is the duty bearer of school feeding, who actually is the main person, main entity concerned with the welfare of children, the welfare of schools, um, really buying in and really contributing to this critical service. And in Kenya, we're seeing that shift start to happen um, in the first three counties, but with other counties that are coming on board as well. Well, Wera, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you.